On the 28th of January, Sonos released the latest software update for the iOS and the Android version of the Sonos S2 app and they are both now at the same version of 80.16.32. Now in this update, there are a couple of things, right? There's support for the ERA 100 Pro, which is the commercial um, kind of PoE speaker for commercial spaces and the ability to create zones for the ERA 100 Pro and other selected players. So this is probably the biggest feature that is released in this update. There's also an added ability to snooze an alarm within the app, which is strange because to launch the app and snooze the alarm, you're probably quite awake at the moment. And also there are updates to the system settings management to visibly showcase high touch settings. Not sure about that. I went through the settings page. I didn't notice anything different. Maybe I missed something. Uh, battery charge percentage is also now in the system view. And there's an overall improvement to parental controls in iOS. So this is strange because maybe this doesn't get replicated over to an android version now all these updates aside i want to talk about the specific one which is of interest to maybe some of us so the biggest update that was released in this update is zones so what are zones now zones are something like groups basically it pulls all your speakers into a semi permanent zone grouping right it is meant for commercial products like the era 100 pro but they have rolled it out to a couple of other products i'll talk about those products in a while it basically groups all your music players together it works with the era 100 era 300 speakers as well as the ones and the five so anything that i did not just mention they are not supported there are some other limitations which i'll go through later in the video but right now I want to talk about what the functionalities are. So the zones, when you group them into these zones, they are able to take inputs from a variety of sources. So you can use Spotify Connect directly. You can play it from the Sonos S2 app player music directly from Apple Music. Basically, a zone is treated like a single speaker. You can also use Bluetooth any of the speakers in the zone can initiate bluetooth but what that will mean is it's limited to the era 100 and 300 since those are the ones with bluetooth connectivity the ones and the fives has no bluetooth but that also means that your ones and the fives can kind of play bluetooth since the eras will be able to act as the gateway now line in works as well so any of your speakers with a line in input will be able to accept and broadcast all the sounds through everything all the speakers that you have grouped together in a single zone now there are a few things that will apply to the whole zone right when your whole zone is treated as one speakers uh the name of the whole zone it will apply the volume limit status lights touch controls and loudness they will all apply to the speakers it doesn't go individual speakers it is applied to the all the speakers within the single zone now there are settings that you can perform for individual speakers within the zone uh, namely the volume trim the eq the line in as well as the voice assistant but the voice assistant will only work when it is the primary speaker you have to set up the voice assistant on the primary speaker before you add it to the zone so when you add it to the zone set it as the first speaker that's how you determine it as the primary speaker now are there limitations when it comes to zone well yes and actually the limitation list is pretty long i'll just go through it you cannot add stereo speakers into a zone now i don't mean stereo as in the speaker is capable of playing stereo i mean as in you cannot have a stereo pair and then you add the stereo pair into the zone you've got to break up the stereo pair before you add each of the speaker into the zone you cannot add sound bars as well you cannot add the sonos amps and none of the portable speakers will be able to be added to a zone so there are limited speakers that you can add and as i've mentioned the era speakers the ones and the five they can be added nothing else you cannot even add a sub. So if any of your speakers are paired with a sub, you cannot add that into the zone, right? So basically within the zone, you cannot have any subs. And when you're playing through a zone, there's no spatial audio, no Atmos music, just stereo. And it's a sum stereo throughout all your speakers. That is also no true play. If true play is on any of your speakers, 
when you add them to the zone, they will be deactivated. And when it comes to the number of speakers in the zone, well, you definitely need at least two, right? It makes sense if it is one, you don't need a zone. So two, but it goes up to a max of 16 speakers. Now, if you have 16 speakers to add to a zone, I think you have another problem, not just the limitations of this zone concept. Now, I want to talk about how different zones are and how they're different from groups, right? Now, because you have the ability to group your speakers and play them throughout uh, the same music throughout the entire group, but grouping is not permanent. It is not even uh, semi-permanent. Every time you get out of the group or every time the speakers power off, they will lose the grouping. Now, zones are kind of permanent, right? Semi-permanent. It doesn't lose the group after you power off. So for zones, it will stay as one speaker, even if specific speakers within the zones are powered off. The next time you power on, it will join in automatically. Groups, no, right? Groups, you can group soundbar and speakers with subs, as well as the M or even the EKR Symphonic speakers, not for zones. Zones cannot group soundbars, cannot group the Sonos Amps, and cannot group the EKR Symphonic speakers. And groups, you can play stereo. So you can group a stereo pad ones or the fives into a group, but not for zones. Zones, when you add speakers, you cannot add them in stereo pad. They have to be broken up before they are added to the zone. So these are the kind of differences between zones and groups. So I would say that when you use zone and when you use group might depend on how you want to set up your home setup now i would say that for commercials yes it probably makes a difference you want to play a uh, different sound from uh, maybe in a department store you want to play uh, children's music in one floor where it applies to uh, children and they are selling kids toys you want to play uh, some other music when it comes to women's apparel men's apparel yeah you could do that or in a restaurant in each individual private room you could also do that but i don't know maybe you just set up two speakers and group them like how you would normally group them previously into rooms, right? And more importantly, groups, you can group stereo speakers. You cannot group stereo speakers for zones. Groups can also include stereo speakers with subs attached. Groups can also include setups that has true play applied, not for zones. So it is kind of different, but some of them sounds more like limitations rather than pure differences that Sonos is trying to implement to differentiate between groups and zones. So are there things that you can do to improve groups? I can think of a few things, right? Firstly, I would think that it is important to extend the support to the Sonos M, but maybe they are not doing that because they are planning to release a Sonos M version 2, Gen 2, or something like that, right? Where they will be able to extend the zone support to this new amplifier. The Sonos Amp is now pretty old already. I think it is probably running on five years old at the moment. So they don't have the support, but Amps are important. They are used quite extensively in commercial setups today. Not so much for room setups at home, but uh, for commercial, right? So you do want to extend the support to the Sonos Amp. You should also extend support. Sonos extend the support to sound bars, right? For home theater setup. And you can then assign specific speakers to the left, to the right, to the center channel, to the surrounds, to the heights channel. That will really help. Maybe this is the stepping stone, right? Towards that kind of setup where you can set up a zone where there is a sound bar playing the primary sound from your home theater. And then you can group into zones, group extra speakers for the left channel, for the right channel, and for all the individual channels of the surround sound mix that you have. So that will be actually quite cool. And I can think of another improvement along that line also uh, of allowing specific assignments or specific channels to each speaker. So you can have, say, four setups, right? Speaker A and speaker C will play the left channel and speaker B and speaker D will play the right channel. So in that way, you can actually create a true stereo setup. There are a couple of things that most of them will be overcoming the limitation like true play, like uh, maybe even pairing a sub into the zones. So there are a couple of things that can be done to improve zones, but this is probably an interesting step forward. Now, as an outro of this video, I would like to call for you guys to share what kind of features and what kind of ideas you can have and what you can do with zones. So leave 
all those ideas in the comment section down below and if you have some ideas for how to improve on this concept maybe put it down in the comment section and let the sonos folks look at it and get some ideas from there so for now i would say that zones are interesting and mostly useless for most of us unless you have a really big house and different people in the house and your house different room serves different functions different zones maybe you have a home gym maybe you have a, a outdoor spa i don't know okay any of these or maybe you have a bowling alley in your house you want to play different kind of music with uh, 16 speakers across uh well it's another problem and most of us won't have that problem uh sonos let us know what you are trying to solve so meanwhile stay tuned we are already in february of 2025 so i would say that if sonos under the new sonos uh leadership the new ceo um whether they'll keep to two product launches a year and uh, that was promised by the previous ceo the outgoing ceo i would say that if they keep to that then we are due for a new product anytime within the next one two months or so so if you are interested keep in touch say subscribe and check out my videos when those product launches